Hello and welcome to another episode of My Retro Watches. My name is Mike and on the bench in front of us today we have an interesting watch with an interesting name for an Englishman like me who can't speak any languages so I'll try and pronounce it as best I can which is Boom et Mercier. So my apologies if my French is terrible or my pronunciation is terrible but that's the best I can kind of do. So this watch was sent to me by a friend of mine uh, a friend called uh, Geno, and as you can see, it's a lovely looking vintage watch. Has um, aged on the dial, and it's also got a bit of water staining, certainly up in the corner up here. But it is not running at all. Uh, we can wind this watch, and it doesn't do anything. We can pull the crown, turn the hands, all that works. But it will not run. So the uh, the mission on this one really is to just see if a simple service is going to fix it, or if we just strip it down, perhaps we might find what the problem is. I'm hoping it's not really a part. I'm hoping it's just jammed up with some gunk or some uh, debris or detritus. So uh, without further ado, we'll uh, try and take it apart and have a better look at it. So if we turn the watch over, have a look at the case back. Um, it's got a lot of dents in it. Uh, I don't know how that could have happened, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if it comes out in the light or not. Uh, what's also very interesting, it's got the original strap. I'm assuming this is the original strap for the watch. And yes, it has been worn, uh, but it's certainly been sitting a long time. You can see where that's been for decades by the looks of things. So it hasn't been worn much, or perhaps it has, and it's had a replacement strap of the same brand. Who knows? Uh, but we'll take the case back off. I've already loosened it, of course, just to make things a bit easier. And here we have the movement. And I don't know what to say. I've not seen one like this. And I know through... Uh, a previous examination or a quick examination that it's a felsen movement i can't read the number on camera here but i'm sure we'll get to that later on uh, so the first thing i want to do is well i wanted to get out of the case but looking at this rotor uh, i'd rather try and remove the rotor now uh, before i decase it it makes things a little bit easier and the way to do it on here is a setup that I have never seen before. But don't forget, certainly if you're new to the channel, that I am just a hobbyist. Uh, this is not a profession. I just like to play with watches. And at the moment, I'm on a little bit of a campaign into the Swiss movements and trying to learn a little bit more about those. But uh, so I noticed that it had this like little arrow here and there is a little lever. Um, and I'm assuming because I don't know yet that I have to push this lever I'm having to use some quite fine tweezers there so that sort of move that and then I'm assuming yeah, there we go. That was going to lift off. So that's a really interesting feature. I've not seen that before. Don't know if my camera can focus on this or not. Doesn't look like it wants to. So yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think I'll be taking that part apart. I think I'll just clean it. So now that's off, we can have a little bit of a look into the movement. And I think what we'll do is we'll put it on the microscope and have a look really close up. So here we go, let's have a little uh, close-up view, see what we can see, anything obvious. Uh, like I say, I've not really looked at this at all, so, uh, and I'm trying to keep it in focus at the same time, which is not doing very well, is it? So I just wanted to sort of examine, yep, so look, there's a great big hair already. It's a bit of grease, a lot of scoring to that wheel there. This cover plate, of course, for all the automatic works is really hampering our view somewhat. And so is my coordination because I can't seem to find. <laughs> Here we go. So here's the, the balance. This is something we definitely want to be looking at. The hairspring looks pretty good from what I can see there. It doesn't look like it's out of shape. 
I uh, can't really, can we see down into the pallet fork? So again, I can just see the pallet fork jewel there. Maybe there's some more uh, hair stuck down there. And then that's the all important look. So it's a Felser movement, a one, five, six, zero. Okay, well, it doesn't look like to be much to be seen here after all. So I will uh, carry on. Uh, with the strip down. So I'll just uh, wind the hands on. I'll just put them something like that so they're pretty close together. Makes it easier for when I need to remove them. And then I need to get the stem out. And there's a stem. I'm hoping that's the stem release screw. Now I'll remove the hands. And I'm using Horotech two point five mil. Um, Hand removing tools, absolutely brilliant, best investment ever, and the only hand removing tools you will ever need, in my opinion. So there we are, those are off. Okay, the dial is now off and we can start seeing the inner workings of the dial side. So we've just got the keyless works here and I'm just having a quick look to familiarise myself. Okay, so let's start stripping it. I do notice it says here DRP USA and a patent. I'm not sure what that is or what if that is an American connection in any way because I know that this manufacturer or I believe at least this manufacturer was Swiss. So we just moved the hour wheel there. It's a nice movement. We've got the dire shock or the um, inca block, should I say, and some of the jewels around. But it looks quite a pretty thing. And we're going to start off, if I can find the right size screwdriver, and we're just going to disassemble all of the keyless works here. And this part here is the setting lever spring. Always sometimes a bit nervous removing those because you've always got a spring here for the yoke. Now that's interesting, the minute wheel quite tight but Rodico always wins that battle <laughs> although this one's putting up a bit of a fight there we go. So we need to deal with that spring. And the way I like to do these is get a bit of pegwood. Make sure you've got a hold of it so it's not going to fly. And then you can usually just disengage them. It's a bit of a long spring this one. And there we go. 
and then that way you don't lose it. Then the yoke. And my guess is the setting lever, well it is, it's already controlled by a screw device because I've already undone that once. So we have the clutch. And somewhere in there is the winding pinion. There it is. So other than the cannon pinion, uh, we're almost there. Now I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try and remove the cannon pinion using my uh, hand removing tool. There we are. And we'll get the, uh, the setting lever out a little bit later on. But there we go, that is the uh, dial side done. I keep thinking I can see it ticking through the holes there, but it's just the uh, the balance moves when I move the movement. So we'll turn it over and we'll attempt the other side now. Right, okay, so this is where things could get a little bit more tricky. Uh, certainly with the automatic works on here, I'm not familiar with this setup at all. So when we remove this cover, you need to have a good look at where the parts are in their positions. Um, I'm just gonna swing the balance as you can see it swings nice and freely so that's not snarled up at all and with that i'm also going to remove it it's always wise to move remove the uh, balance early such a fragile part easily damaged not easily replaced and if you damage the hairspring which is in there <coughs> excuse me uh, they are really really difficult to fix uh, I certainly aren't very good at trying to do any work on those. Okay, with the balance nicely tucked away. You can just see if I just tap the pilot fork, there is zero power coming through the train whatsoever. That could mean anything right now. So the moment of truth will be to remove this top cover to start with. I hope there's no tricky little springs under here that's going to catch me out. And that seems to be on quite tight. I'm just curious as to see if there's anything I've missed. Certainly don't want to force anything. There we go. All right, <laughs> that looks quite complicated. There's a little lever point here uh, to get that cover off. Let me turn right around so I can see it a bit better. So this is a really interesting uh, setup and a, definitely a first for me. We've got a very delicate little spring there. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is for yet. Obviously these are the bi-directional, or I'm assuming they're the bi-directional winders for the rotor. So it will wind the spring in any direction. 
and but the rest of it I'm a little bit of a loss obviously we've got this little part here which is attached to a little pinion under there um, I was wondering whether this actually could be the click but I don't think it can be I don't know so <laughs> this is going to be fun and it shows my amateur skills Ooh, that, now that was that was only just in there so it's what to try and remove next so if we can try and get these wheels out Okay, so the uh, pinion there comes away with it. I'm not sure whether it's supposed to do that or not. And then there we have it. Okay, I just had a quick look off, off camera to familiarise myself. Um, so I'm going to remove these three screws here. I'm not quite sure what this plate is for. And then, of course, this whole bridge will come off, I'm assuming, from these larger screws there. Certainly very small screws, these ones. Extremely easy to lose. But I'm enjoying my um, exploration into uh, the Swiss movements. I've been stuck on Seiko for so long that pushing myself into these, every one I do is a new um, movement. And that's becoming quite interesting. Certainly this one is different to anything I've seen before. So much so I'm struggling with this screw. This is one of those sort of plates that you do wonder whether you could leave intact. And get away with it in cleaning, but obviously not. And there we go, you see there's a jewel underneath. So, And you won't be able to see that because I don't I think my focus is off. There we go. No, I don't think it's going to work. There's actually some wet oil underneath there, which is a bit surprising for me. Um, that well, I say it's surprising. It has got two service marks in the uh, case back, so it has been done at some point. But I'm still none the wiser as to why there is no power getting through. And all this does look solid, to be honest. Oh, quite an interesting and complicated movement. Right, we'll try and remove these screws and get at this cover plate. Okay.
That's interesting, it's got a wheel underneath there. Again, plenty of what looks like oil. So I will remove that when I clean. Let's see if we can remove some of the train. Definitely a very interesting barrel. Have the click just here. And I'm a bit perplexed at this moment in time how I'm going to undo that and where its spring is. Let me have a closer look. Okay, uh, I couldn't see it from where I was, but when I've looked at it closer to my eye, there's a screw here, there's the spring which holds the click. So that's quite interesting. So I'm going to, I think, just try and unscrew it and, uh, and hope for the best, really. I really hope that nothing's going to go flying. Uh, I don't think it will, uh, but you never know with these things. And damn it, you heard that. I uh, really made a cardinal sin there. So I hadn't let the spring down. Uh, although I'm not too sure how I could have done that with all the automatic works in the way and of course the mainspring has just unwound I heard it and I'm sure you did too fortunately it doesn't look like it's done anything any damage to anything and these two very small parts didn't fly away so I think the watch gods were at least on my side for once on that one um, now I'm still a bit stuck. I'm going to remove the rest of this click spring anyway. So what you always get with me is you see my mistakes as they happen. And just like that then when I've let the screw go under the movement holder somewhere. <laughs> there we go. That's become quite a tricky movement. And uh, it's still being difficult now because I'm not sure how to remove the uh, barrel yet. I'm guessing I've got to take all this off here. So we'll just get rid of the pallet fork, keep them safe. And of course the escape wheel there. That really is not going my way, is it? There we are. Always want to be a little bit careful because you can quite easily snap the pivots of these things but I'm lucky I've got away with it so we just need to figure out this barrel setup I think I'm going to try and take these big screws out before I look at that little thing there and throughout all of this I still have no idea what was not making it run. I will have to inspect the parts off camera, make sure they all look right and there's no teeth missing. But so far there's been nothing obvious that I've seen. Maybe you guys have seen something on camera. Uh, but uh, all we can hope for now is to clean them, clean the parts and uh, try and assemble as best I can. 
see if we can get it going again. I'm not sure, oh, I was going to say I'm not sure how to get that out because I don't want to go anywhere near the centre wheel. But it seems like it wants to come out. And Rodico might help me. Or it might not. It seems to be catching on. Ah, there we go. Right, the barrel, barrel is finally out. And again, let's just try and switch off the autofocus thing it is an interesting barrel not one I've seen before um, I'm guessing well, I was going to say that comes off but I've, at the moment I've moved that I can see the mainspring underneath it so uh, I might have to do a bit of googling before I attempt anything in there so we'll try and get this out now That really is. Really is stuck on its post. Right, and now. I'm making the right hash of things. And this is <laughs> this is where you see the amateur in myself. Here we go. So we can remove that bridge. And then we've got the second hand um I don't know what you call it, staff. Which we'll be very careful with. And now we can remove the center wheel so there we go folks that is the strip now complete okay there's a couple of bits i need to look at like the main spring and there was another little wheel on the main bridge as well which has something to do with the winding mechanism i think oh and of course we have the screw here which i'll undo which will take off the um setting lever um so at this point in all my videos, I'd normally be saying let's cut to the cleaning, but unfortunately I can't on this occasion because the Bren Ray, well, if you're, if you're regular to the channel, you may have seen my Bren Ray antique watch cleaning machine that I like to use as a little interlude, a break between the stripping down and the rebuilding, and it's broken. The uh, motor has burnt out on it, believe it or not, and I'm having to have it rewound at a local company at quite a lot of expense as well unfortunately but it's getting done because i think if i can get it fixed it'll probably last quite a few years to come so uh, for now this will have to be washed in the ultrasonics and that does not make for a good video so we'll conclude this bit here now and the next bit you'll see hopefully is the rebuild Right, so now it is time for the build. I've completely cleaned all of the parts um, in the slow method of my old ultrasonic, so it takes a while. And I'm now rebuilding probably about a week later as well to uh, add insult to injury, because I've now got to try and remember where everything goes. So here we go. Now I did examine all the parts on the microscope and uh, I couldn't really see anything that was wrong. Uh, so I'm literally just gonna try and rebuild it See if we can get it running from that and uh, hope that that's all it was going to take to fix this watch. It's about time I had a little bit of luck because recent builds on and off camera have uh, not been so fruitful uh, with their uh, easeability, should we say, of trying to rebuild. So I'm going to be, uh, first of all, because I've got no manual, I can only go on my gut instinct of where to oil and the uh, center wheel doesn't have any uh, jewel bearing at all so I'm just going to put a little bit of D5 uh, it's a bit of a thicker oil 
but um, that's my reasoning put a bit of that there in that hole whoops so we can get the center wheel in position now I've also uh, cheated just a little bit because if you remember that little click spring uh, I've decided to fit that already off camera uh, I've got yet to fit the bit that goes there the actual lever itself but this little spring was quite a tricky little fella so uh, rather than <laughs> suffer that uh, I've done it like I say off camera I've also done the same with a setting lever as well hopefully it makes the video a little bit uh, quicker and easier to follow so I'm now going to put the barrel in and I'm going to put some Mobius this is not Mobius sorry this is Mollycoat DX grease just going to put a bit of that in the hole and introduce the barrel now the barrel again sorry I've done this off camera and probably to some of your annoyance but it was a real actually now I'm regretting fitting that part there we go um, the barrel was a real killer because the actual lid is also the ratchet uh, wheel uh, to wind the spring and so it's all sort of integrated and it was a bit of a problem it took me a while to get it off and even longer to get it on and engaged uh, so <laughs> showing my uh, true skills off camera rather than on camera here uh, so now that's in place we had the uh, bridge and that went across here and in the disassembly uh, part of the video uh, it had this little cap on here which I took off because I figured there would be a jewel here uh, but rather strangely there's not and um, so I'm not too sure what that cap is for other than perhaps acting as a bit of a bush for once we put the uh, the second hand I never know what you call it but the second hand staff that fits in that hole so part of me is tempted to put a bit of oil in there I don't know why uh, but that's what I'm going to do all the same so we'll put a bit of um, 9010 just a spot And then we can offer up the part, which is quite a delicate little thing. And it's now the wrong way around. There's that little cutout. It's like I say, it's such a fiddle. Let's just see if we can offer it up a bit easier with some ruddy coat. Okay, there we are. And it's secured with a minuscule screw. Okay, now that's in. So we'll check in the barrels engaged with the centre wheel and then we have that part there and again from my Seiko uh, experience I always like to put just a little bit of oil just there and that's kind of where it comes out of the cannon pinion and I've just put a little bit too much there and it's got stuck So I've just got to fit the two screws and then we can put the train of wheels in. So now I'm going to try to fit this click part <laughs> and it would fall through the only hole. 
So this is a real delicate little thing, as you can tell. And I'm hoping just to get it in and lined up. And typically that spring is now causing me some grief to get it into position. I was really hoping just to slide that in. Let's just try, if we can drop the screw in, we'll be halfway home. Okay, screw is in. That's definitely got some spring to it, and you can see it's pinching and binding into the teeth there. It's just strange because I looked at this screw before, it's got a domed head, and it's unlike all of the other ones in the movement, which suggests to me that it's not actually the right screw for that hole. So there is a suspicion there that um, somebody's replaced that at some point. However, let's just continue. So we now need to put the train of wheels in. We've got the escape. And then this rather interesting sort of like double wheel and it's going to be a bit more tricky I think to get into place. I've got to kind of thread it through here. And then there we go. So they are all lined up and now it's time for the train bridge. So here is the train bridge and the uh, it's like an inverted crown wheel goes there. I didn't take it off on strip down, um, but I did afterwards for cleaning. I'm just going to put a bit of D5 there, high friction point, and then we can offer the wheel up. And I can already see there's a problem. Oh, right. Okay, so here's the screw. Now, normally with these crown wheels, you'd have a washer that fits over that post. Uh, and then when you tighten the screw up, obviously the wheel can continue to go around. And the washer is missing. Now, I don't actually recall removing that um, on disassembly. And I didn't take any photos and I didn't do it on camera. So, oh, God. Um, well, for a start, this is a lesson for you guys. Anyone out there uh, getting into this, make sure that you take as many photos as possible. I'm now going to have to search all the cleaning fluids, everything, everywhere I've kept these parts to see if I can find that. Of course, I don't know if it was even missing or not. I do remember this recess, funnily enough. And... I would have assumed that that would actually go the other way to fit over the washer. So I might be searching now for ages for absolutely nothing because I don't even have the part here to start with. Who knows? So I'll be back in just a second. Well, here we are half an hour later for me. Uh, probably a couple of seconds for you guys. And I can't find the part anywhere. I've been inside my cleaning fluid jars uh, with a magnet to uh, searched everything and it's not lying where I would hope it would have been so I can either conclude that either I've lost it completely somewhere uh, or that it wasn't even there to begin with now I'm going to nip up the screw but I know my gut instinct is telling me that this is all going to be in vain So 
So there we have it, the screw's tightened. And yeah, we're gonna have a lot of play look. Now that isn't natural. The there's a winding pinion here, so when you turn the crown, it would wind and it, it would wind sorry, it'd wind this this gear like this, and then that then winds the barrel in turn. So um with it being a bit wobbly, I'm not sure it's, it's probably bind rather than actually uh, turn properly. There's nothing I can do, and for the sake of the video, certainly right now, let's continue. I'll uh, try and fit the train wheel bridge now, and um, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. Uh, deep down, I'm going to be kicking myself all the way through this now, <laughs> but hey, <I'll, laughs> hopefully it's a bit of entertainment for you guys, who knows. So this train wheel bridge, I'm expecting to be a little bit fiddly. Got quite a lot to line up in one go. And I've, one of the one of the wheels is out, and I really can't tell from where I'm sitting. I'm not going to chance it. I'm just going to do it on the microscope. Sorry, guys. Okay, so that's the train bridge on. Sorry about that. I had to put it on the microscope. Really want to break a pivot. And it was this fourth wheel or the that double wheel uh, pivot that wasn't sitting in its jewel there. So now they're in, you can see if I move the barrel, that hopefully you can see that some of the wheels are turning there. And what I've also noticed as well is that I was questioning the little domed screw for the click, but the way it sits on this bridge, I think is pretty clear that it's actually the right screw after all. Uh, so there we are, learning <laughs> all the time. So I think the plan now really uh, will be to um, perhaps flip it over, put the uh, keyless works in, and then we can come back and try and get the pallet fork in, get the balance on, and at least see if we can wind it. Okay, here we go with the keyless works. So I've got the winding pinion. I've already pre-greased the uh, castellations on that. So that slots in there nice and easily. Then we can pop in the clutch. And at this point I will try to thread in the stem. There we go. I was just trying to keep that, um, that keeps them in position, should I say. And then I want the yoke. I'm just checking at the moment that that yoke, I think I've got it the wrong way around. Uh, yeah, I've just turned it around and now you can see it, it's biting on the clutch there, no problem at all. And just where these two meet, I'm going to give it a bit of grease. Working completely blind, of course, I've got no uh, service sheet on this or anything. Okay, now it's going to be the um, little pinion that drives the uh, wheels for changing the time. And 
and then we need the yoke spring and hopefully this isn't going to be too tricky so just get it lined up hold it in place with the pegwood And there we have that in there. Just going to oil nine oh one nine oh one oh for there, and just change my oiler. A touch of D five for the cannon pinion. So the canyon pinion's fitted. I can just drop in the minute wheel. And that's all so I can fit the little cover that was on it it kind of holds everything in place it goes there like that got two little screws which I'll tighten up off the camera and then I need to tighten up the uh, setting lever screw as well here. And I'm running my head with myself here completely because I haven't fitted the yoke. What an idiot. In my defence, it is now quite late at night and... Uh, Maybe I'm losing my concentration a little bit. So perhaps I'm going to finish these bits and come back to this video in the morning when I'm feeling a little bit fresher. And of course, I'm making a real hash of things. Like I keep saying, you see all the mistakes as they happen, and hopefully you can have a little giggle at it. And now we can fit that cover again. Okay, so the screws are all in. Uh, the yoke is in place. I've actually put a little bit of grease on the yoke here as well. So it's set in positions. And in many respects, this is going to be the moment of truth. Hopefully you can hear that. That is definitely winding. You see the wheels going round. So that's a pretty good sign. It doesn't feel like it's catching or anything. Okay, the, the main thing will be when it's under tension. So I do need to get the pallet fork in there and lock that into position. And then it will actually hold some wind or hopefully it will hold some wind. So of course, that's what I'm going to fit next. So I nearly always fit pallet forks on the microscope 
but I'm just not set up on it at the moment with a camera and and maybe I should be because <laughs> I don't know I think there's that I actually think I've got it upside down which doesn't help does it I really do need to quit while I'm ahead right now. It is late, as I've said. But I'm eager to see if it's going to hold power. So I think that's in. Okay, we'll just tighten that up. Okay, so now it's going to be time to fit the balance. And if you can hear any sort of background noise, uh, it's because it's absolutely really, really stormy here now. And uh, there's a lot of rain and a lot of wind. So this is going to be the moment of truth. And I'm not sure that's in very well. And there we go, there's a little bit of life. I haven't got the uh, balance clock in position yet though. Yeah. And now it is in position. The damn thing stopped. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Let's just see, let's put the screw in just in case the screw jacks it back up again. I've had that before. <laughs> yes so it's obviously just on a little bit of a skew so as soon as I tighten that up that's spinning quite nicely might have a slight low amplitude I don't know at this stage of course we haven't oiled anything which is what we're going to be doing next and again it's winding and it's winding nice so clearly that washer that I thought was missing might actually be deliberate after all because um, it doesn't feel wrong at all in the wind. So that's great news. Really, really pleased to see this running. Of course, it was dead before when we started. And um, I always get a kick out of it when you see that going because that means that you fixed it really other than just putting the rest of the parts back on and uh, trying to fine tune it a little bit. So without further ado, we're going to go to the microscope and we're going to start oiling the jewels. So I'm going to use 9010. And we'll start with the escape there. And then we'll just move around. So we have this one here, which is a non jeweled one. And then this for the centre wheel. Now this one is um, part of the winding mechanism, or the auto wind mechanism, so I'll put a little bit of D5 there while I'm at it, just in preparation. Now we have the uh, inker block there, I'm trying to see if I can get it in focus, I'm hoping that's in focus for you, because my eyes, as I always say, are terrible. There we are. And 
all I can do really on film for this is take it out. I will oil it separately on the bench. It's quite an ordeal. And uh, I've shown it a few times before. But for speed of the video, I'll keep it straightforward this time and not film it. So just pop it open like that. And then I'm going to use a little bit of Roddy Co to remove it safely. And then of course we've got another one of these on the other side as well. So there we go. So here we are on the dial side and um, I've already done the ink block setting there off camera I'm afraid. This one here is the um, palette so we'll leave that alone. Now this one's the escape and I've noticed um, I'll just oil it first. This should have a little cap over the top of it with a little screw that goes in there. Um, that's I'm not too sure what that's for other than potentially trying to keep it clean um, or add an extra jewel cap. I'm not sure but it's missing on this one and uh, clearly it's supposed to go there. I'm hoping and don't really think that it'll have much uh, difference in its operation because obviously the pivots sit in nicely there. And we'll find out soon enough when we put it on the time grapher. And again, we'll just oil the rest of them here. That one didn't oil very well. So there we go. That is all the jewels done. In theory, I've got to do the uh, pallet jewels, but obviously this thing is running right now. And now I've wound it up, I'm not sure how to unwind it easily uh, without letting the spring go in one go. Uh, it's a bit of a fiddle. So for the now, I'm going to leave them unoiled, and we're going to continue on try and put the automatic works on the on the watch. Quick little bit of uh, freehand recording, straight onto the time graph. This is the trace we're getting. So it doesn't look too bad. I haven't regulated, I haven't done anything at all, to be honest with you. And um, I, I don't know, It's uh, the rate's good, the beta is good. I'm not too sure about what the amplitude should be on this one, so I'm just going to take it as a win right now. Of course, it might change in positions, and I'll find that out really when I uh, case the movement. But I just thought I'd want to show you that straight after oiling, that that's where we're looking. So that is, again, really, really good news for this one. Okay, so let's start with the um, automatic works. And I've got a slightly different camera angle now because uh, in the meantime, uh, we're on another day and I've had a tripod arrive in the post. So I'm going to first of all drop that little uh, click in its hole. Or at least I'm going to try. There we go. And then we have this combination of wheels. So I've kind of figured out really that this has to be, this has to engage with this wheel. onto the teeth, the spring must hold it there. And I'm guessing it's somehow to, again, Hold the tension as the rotor's spinning around, uh, winding the um, mainspring. So then we've got this one. Ah, this one's actually hampered by the um, balance. So I'm going to have to try and see if I can gently persuade that to find its home. I don't think it's found it yet. There we go. Right. So that's that one in. And then the last one that's got a little gear on the underside. And that's going to fit in its jewel. Which is there. And then hopefully, if I can just sort of nudge these a little bit. We can see everything turning and then of course I forgot as I keep forgetting everything by lots of things to put the little cap on um, which 
goes there. So I'll get that in position and of course I've got three screws so I'll just do those screws off camera and then we'll come back and we'll try and do that horrible looking spring. Okay that little cap is now on that's the actual post that the rotor will sit on and um, we've got to do the spring like I said before but we've also got to put that arm on and um, I'm actually finding it quite incredible how some of these automatic um, works uh, work the design is quite interesting certainly compared to uh, how Seiko uh, simplified it so this little arm here once we've got it in position is will move I guess with the rotor so as the rotor spinning one way that will move across and engage with one of those unidirectional wheels and then if it spins the other it engages with the other one uh, quite ingenious really so there we go that's in position and all that remains now is that spring Okay, now the the more trickier part. And that didn't quite work. And now it's taken that part underneath the wheel, which I don't think is where it's supposed to go. Although it keeps wanting to go there, doesn't it? That can't be right. Sometimes when you think these springs are going to be bad, they're just bad because you think they are. Oh. Okay. <laughs> There we go, it's in position. So I need to put that cover on pretty darn quick. I'm expecting this to be quite interesting as well. There we are, that is located. I've got three screws to go. It went on very easy, and if you remember when it came off, it came off with a quite a ping. So I do contemplate whether some of the problem with it not running to start with was in there. So we'll put the screws in, and then all we've got to do is put the rotor on. So the screws are in, and I said I was going to put the rotor on, but I'm not. I'm going to uh, sort the other side out first of all, get the dial and the hands on. We can put the rotor on when it's in the case, it's a bit safer to do so. But I'm also going to just oil quickly 
the uh, the pivots there. And I'm going to all them with a bit of D5, just because again I think they might be a bit higher friction, being always in use for the um, when the rotor's winding them. So I'll, I'll do that off camera. We'll flip it over and then just like I say, get the uh, get the dial and hands on. And there we go, it's ticking again. And I absolutely never tire of seeing that. It's always more so rewarding, to be honest with you, certainly when they've not been running. There we go, it's past the uh, minute hand, which is always a bonus, because sometimes they do foul. So like I say, I'll put this in the case now. Uh, we can get the rotor on and we're near the end. Last piece in the puzzle. And had that strange pin. There we go. I'm hoping you can hear that, but that is definitely winding. No problems at all. So mission accomplished. Okay, it's now the end of the video and I'm really, really disappointed. So the watch has been running on my bench for at least 24 hours. I've put it on the time grapher now. And as you can see, the trace is all over the place. Um, it's actually keeping pretty good time, uh, but I'd like a, a straighter line than what we're getting at the moment. And I can flip it over to um, dial up, for instance, and it's not really going to make much difference at all. And I'm at a loss as to what the problem is. This problem could be a whole host of things from perhaps just a bit of debris it's managed to get in there when I was building it and is hampering one of the wheels uh, to something bent, maybe even the mainspring, who knows? It was running better than this originally. So um, this is a problem that sort of growed over the last 24 hours. So I am bitterly disappointed, but I'm going to end the video on this note because otherwise this video will be extremely long so if you've stuck with me to the end here thank you very very much indeed i do appreciate you guys watching if you like the video definitely give me a, a thumbs up please because that does help the algorithm and it helps drag more people into my channel and hopefully more and more people get in incentivized into getting into this hobby because that's what my channel is all about so 
Again, leave comments below because I will read every one of them and I will try and answer as many as I possibly can. Uh, don't forget to join the, the Facebook group, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. There's a lot of us in there, all watch nerds. You can get your daily fixes. Uh, you can uh, post your uh, watches that you're wearing or you can ask your questions and you'll all be answered. It's a great community. It spreads all over the world. So again, thanks for watching this one. More coming very soon. Bye for now.